Okay, class, we are finally going to be doing the blood flow to the brain. So this is going to be your circle of Willis. So you need to have your circle of Willis worksheet out in front of you. Um, so you can do some of this with me while I'm going through it. It's under your cardiovascular system of your Weebly website. If you don't have it, stop the video and get it. Otherwise, this is just kind of a waste of time. So let's get started. So you know there's four blood vessels that carry blood to the brain, the two um, in internal carotid arteries and the two vertebral arteries. You also need to remember that these blood vessels are entering the skull through holes. So they've got to get to the brain through these holes in the skull. The internal carotid arteries will come enter through the carotid canals, and we'll look at those again. And the vertebral arteries are going to enter through the huge foramen magnum. So we are going to start first with the vertebral system. We call it the vertebral system that's formed from our vertebral arteries. So just a quick review. Here is your subclavian. Remember the vertebral arteries come off of the subclavian arteries. You have a right and left. It's going through the transverse foramen of the cervical vertebrae. And then it's going to kind of curve around and enter the foramen magnum. So this is just showing you the pattern, the way it's going to look. So here is our, our um, subclavian artery. Here is the right vertebral artery going up the cervical vertebrae. It's going to curve around. It's now curving around and it's going to be entering right here the foramen magnum. So the right and left vertebral arteries are now entering the foramen, foramen magnum and they're going to join to form this blood vessel, the basilar artery, and we'll look at that next. So if you are just looking at the vertebral system, don't get overwhelmed with anything else. So let's just start with the vertebral system. And what you need to visualize, this part of the brain is facing the cranial cavity. So let me just show you this. So the part that we are looking at is down here. It is in the crane, it is facing into the cranial cavity. So these blood vessels are going to be entering to the foramen back, foramen ma magnum back in here, and then the carotid canal is going to be somewhere over here. So these blood vessels are coming under this way. So just to help you figure out where you are, and remember the brain stem is this way. We're going to have the pons facing this way. So the pons is anterior. So that will help you too, I hope. So here we have the medulla oblongata. So this is going to be at the level of the foramen magnum because here is the spinal cord. So this is going to be at the level of the foramen magnum. The vertebral arteries are going to run alongside the medulla oblongata, and then they're going to join together the right and left vertebral arteries will join together to form the basilar artery right here, right here. And it's going to run all the way across the entire pons. At the end of the pons, it's going to send out a branch called the, the left posterior cerebral artery and the right posterior cerebral artery. Those are the branches you need to know. So the two vertebrals come up through the foramen magnum. They travel along with the medulla. They cross over the pons, and then they're going to, the basilar artery is going to bifurcate and form the posterior cerebral arteries right and left. So 
So this is a drawing. This is a simplified drawing of this structure. This is the cranial vault. So this is the, the floor of the cranial cavity. This is where your brain is sitting. Here is the foramen magnum here. And on your drawing, this is the foramen magnum. This is the posterior cranial fossa. This is the posterior cranial fossa. This is the middle cranial fossa. This is the middle cranial fossa. This is the anterior cranial fossa. Here is the anterior cranial fossa. And I just drew in a nose and some ears, just so you kind of know where you are. So we are going to be starting first with the vertebral system. Oh, and this is representing the cella turcica, where everything is happening. This is the cella turcica right here. So that's your box, the cella turcica. So here is the, the left vertebral artery, the right vertebral artery. They're coming through the foramen magnum. They're joining to form the basilar artery right here. And the basilar artery is going to split into the left posterior cerebral artery and the right posterior cerebral artery. These are all in the posterior cranial fossa. So posterior cerebral arteries in the posterior cranial fossa. What does cerebral mean? It's going to the cerebral hemispheres, yes. Remember you have Right down the middle here, you're going to have a right cerebral hemisphere and a left cerebral hemisphere. So this left and right, they're going to their respective hemispheres. This basilar, remember this is in a midline structure. This is right over the pons. This is traveling right over the pons. So what I would like you to do is if you would stop the video and quickly just draw this in on your worksheet. Draw it in and make sure you got your posterior cerebral arteries in your posterior cranial fossa. And this will help you because we're going to add to this drawing. Here is on your worksheet too. You have both of these. Here is showing you the vertebral arteries. Again, running up alongside the medulla. The bat, they join to form the basilar or basilar artery and it runs right over the pons and here's the posterior cerebral artery posterior cerebral cerebral artery this was for you to color in every time you are coloring in something it helps you remember what it is vertebral arteries basilar posterior cerebral color it in and you'll remember these arteries hopefully for a long time now we're going to do the internal carotid arteries. So they enter the skull. They are going to be entering the cranium through the carotid canals. Now, way back in the second week or so, third week of class, remember we we're doing the jugular foramen and the carotid canals, sticking pipe cleaners in here. This is the carotid canal. So those internal carotid arteries are entering in through here and they're coming out around here right here on each side so they are coming out just lateral to the cella turcica so a quick review on where these internal carotids come from so this is your brachial cephalic trunk on the right side here is the right common carotid artery and it's going to bifurcate, split into the external carotid and the internal carotid. Here is your left common carotid coming straight off of the aortic arch. Left common carotid. And here is the left internal carotid artery. So they're splitting. And they are going up. And around here, they are now entering the carotid canal of the skull. And they're going through a little canal and they're going to be entering around this area. Here's the cella turcica, lateral to the cella turcica.
Here is what they look like on a, a drawing. This is the internal carotid on this side. Here's the internal carotid on this side. Remember, the internal carotids are coming from this direction, like this. So it's hard to visualize, but they're coming down and they've cut them. But they're coming down like this. Now the internal carotids, they, it's, this guy is going to split. He's going to give us this big branch, the middle cerebral artery. It's running deep to the temporal lobe, so they kind of cut through the temporal lobe so you can see where it's going. Here's the middle cerebral artery on this side with the temporal lobe intact. So that is the middle cerebral artery. And the other branch is this guy. You need to follow him. It's the anterior cerebral artery. He's going around the cella turcica and he's curving in into the medial aspect of the frontal lobe. So this one's going to be on the medial aspect of the right frontal lobe. Here is the right and um, left anterior cerebral artery and he is going into the medial aspect of the left frontal lobe. These are tiny little guys um, with lots of, lots of branches. So let's draw these. These are going to be easier to draw than you can than visualizing them so you can help visualize them. Here's this is representing our carotid canal, this black circle. That is a hole. This guy is our right internal carotid artery. So he's coming through that carotid canal just lateral to the cella turcica. Remember, here's our cella turcica. So he's going to give out a branch. He's going to have two major branches, the middle cerebral artery that's going into the middle cranial fossa. And then he, this anterior cerebral artery is going to wrap around the cella turcica, and then go into the medial aspect of the frontal lobe. On this side it would be the right frontal lobe. Same thing on this side. This left anterior cerebral artery will wrap around the cella turcica and go to its left medial surface of the frontal lobe. Pretty easy, right? So finding it here again, um, this is on your worksheet. So here is the, the internal carotids. Here is the, media, the middle cerebral artery. It's huge, middle cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery. It's ghosted because it is deep to the temporal lobe here. Then it's going to be hard to follow this anterior cerebral artery. And here it is going into the medial aspect of the frontal lobe here. And here it is on this side, going into the medial aspect of the frontal lobe on this side. So then you can color it in here, medial cerebral artery, internal jugular, anterior cerebral artery. If you color this in, it will really help you. Remember, where is the in internal carotid entering the brain? Right here at the lateral part of the cella turcica. Here's the cell here. This everything is happening at the cella turcica. Got the pituitary gland, and we had, remember, our optic nerves were crossing over here, stuck in those pipe cleaners, and they crossed over right over the cella turcica. Remember that? This is the olfactory nerve, cranial nerve one, and these are cranial nerve, these are um, the optic nerves, this is cranial nerve 2. So we'll get to those shortly too. So now we are going to join the vertebral system, the ones that were made, you know, by the vertebral arteries, arteries with the internal carotid system. So we are going to join here is our right anterior cerebral artery and our left anterior cerebral artery. We are going to join them together 
right here, just as they, they start coming in with something called the anterior communicating artery. So it's connecting the right and left anterior cerebral arteries. So draw that in. And now we are going to connect the internal carotid arteries with the posterior cerebral arteries. So this is going to be the right posterior communicating artery right posterior communicating artery joining the right internal carotid with the right posterior cerebral artery. And here's the left posterior communicating artery, posterior cerebral artery here. So now you have a circle. We call this the circle of Willis. Now it is there for a reason. Why do we want to make a circle? Because the brain needs blood. The brain needs oxygenated blood. That you know. And it, these, this little circle is there to provide some insurance in case there's any blockage somewhere in the system. So if you say you had a blockage here in this right anterior cerebral artery, there was some kind of blockage. Maybe you got an emboli and there was a blockage here. What would happen to the rest of the anterior cerebral artery if you had a blockage here? It would be taken care of by this anterior communicating artery. It will go ahead, it will get blood coming from the opposite internal carotid artery and it will shuttle blood over to this side. So, I mean, you're probably still going to have some problems, but not as nearly as many problems because you're protected. You've got this little bridge that's shuttling blood back over. Same thing down here. If you had a, if you had a blockage right here in the posterior cerebral artery right here, could you still get blood going down in this direction. Could you? If the blockage was right here? Of course. You're going to be able to take blood from the internal carotid here, send it down the posterior communicating artery, and it will deliver blood to this artery. So basically, if you have a blockage somewhere in the circle you're probably going to be okay. Maybe not 100% okay, but you have other means of getting blood flow. Now, if you had a blockage right here in this middle cerebral artery, you're screwed because there is no blood flow. There's no way the circle of Willis can help you. You are outside of the circle. Same thing if you had a blockage up in here. So that is why we have our circle and you need to know the arteries that form that circle. The two anterior cerebral arteries, the anterior communicating artery, this is that's this part of the circle, the internal carotid arteries, the posterior cerebral artery, posterior, the posterior communicating artery, this part of the posterior cerebral artery, part of the basilar artery right here. So make sure you can figure out how these are making that circle. If you draw it, if, if this was a real semester and you were in class, you would be given this as a blank sheet of paper and you would be drawing this whole thing for me in five minutes on a test. And on a test, I give you a scenario where Bruce Willis comes in and actually has a blockage that they're going to be doing surgery. And he wants you to explain his circle of Willis. And you are going to tell Bruce Willis if he's going to be all right. But since we're not in class, please try to do this. This will really help you. The circle of Willis is real important clinically. so. Do this, and I 
promise you, once you draw it out, if you draw it out three times, you will know it forever, forever. It's not that hard. You have an anterior cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery, posterior cerebral artery. Those are the main arteries, and they're all in the posterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, anterior cranial fossa. Not that hard. Here is the circle. You'll see this in books and diagrams. Same thing you just drew. If you actually drew it, this is what you were drawing. The circle of Willis. Here is another drawing. So you should be able to find the circle of Willis on anything I give you. Here is a drawing by Netter. He is the most important anatomy drawer or illustrator ever. Um, here is the medulla. Here is the vertebral arteries joining to form the basilar artery. Coming up at the end of the pons, they're, they're, the basilar is traveling over the pons. At the end of the pons, the basilar artery is going to split and form the posterior cerebral arteries. You have the internal carotid arteries, middle cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery, anterior cerebral artery, and you can see it real well going into um, the medial aspect of the frontal lobe there, anterior cerebral artery, anterior communicating artery right here, posterior communicating arteries right here. Not bad at all, right? Here you can see, this is the medulla down here. This is a real, a, a, a real brain over here. So the medulla, here you see the vertebral arteries. Here is the pons. Oops, here's the pons. So he's the, here's the basilar artery. And then here's the posterior cerebral artery here. Posterior cerebral artery here. Posterior communicating artery connecting to the internal carotid artery here. You can see the big lumen of the internal carotid artery there. Here is the um, posterior communicating artery here. And here is the internal carotid artery up here on the other side. Here is the middle cerebral. Here is the anterior cerebral artery anterior cerebral artery and the itty witty bitty um, anterior communicating artery and here's the full part of the anterior cerebral artery that you can see there anterior cerebral artery right there with the anterior communicating artery so basically it's just knowing a pattern you know the pattern so you can pick it out on any kind of diagram that i give you so Here's actual uh, an actual MRI. So they've injected some kind of contrast agent so you can see these main arteries. Now, on a quiz or exam, I would only give you ones that are easily seen. So what do you see down here? What are these? These are the vertebral arteries joining to form the basilar artery, posterior cerebral arteries, right? That ver This ver um, vertebral system is easy to see. Now, the internal carotids, remember, they're coming up through, so they're showing you the internal carotids, but they're not entering the carotid canal till about here. And then here they are, coming in right where the cella turcica is going to be right in here. This is going to be a middle cerebral artery here, and this is going to be the anterior cerebral artery here. Same thing on this side, the internal carotid artery coming up, and then it's going to go in through the carotid canal somewhere around here, and it's going to end up just lateral to the cella turcica, middle cerebral artery, anterior cerebral artery, and this is the anterior communicating artery. On this one, 
I cannot easily see the posterior communicating arteries, so unless it's really easy to see, I won't, I won't be asking you. Hmm, so what do we see here? So let's try to figure this out. Here is the circle, right? So this would be the cella turcica. So this is actually the posterior communicating artery here. Posterior communicating artery here. Here is the posterior cerebral artery on this side. Posterior cerebral artery on this side. So this would be where basically you have the, the basilar artery splitting right here. You do not see the basilar artery or the vertebral arteries on this image. But easy to see the posterior cerebral arteries and the posterior communicating arteries. And you know this is going to the internal carotid. So this is the middle cerebral artery. Here is the anterior cerebral artery on this side. Posterior communicating artery, internal carotid, middle cerebral, anterior cerebral artery on this side, anterior communicating artery. So not, not too bad, right? You've been reading a lot about aneurysms in the book that I have, your, have you reading. So these are where you're going to find aneurysms in the brain. So uh, a member an aneurysm is just um, the wall of the artery is, is weakened. So you're getting these weakened walls filling up with, with arterial blood. Aneurysms are only on the arterial system. Usually they're going to be at areas where there's a lot of force. So you can imagine the basilar artery, there's a lot of force coming this way, and then it's going to send the blood in either direction. So a lot of force, and then you'll, you'll get a weakening right at this junction. Here we have um, one in the, the internal carotid right here, right at the junction of the posterior communicating artery. And here we have another one, this is the anterior anterior communicating artery and the anterior cerebral artery, another junction where there's a lot of aneurysms. 40% of all aneurysms are right there. This is showing you an aneurysm. Look at that. That is just ready to pop and it's been bleeding. This is all old blood in here. They're going in. This is actual, actually, this is the basilar artery right here, and this is the posterior cerebral artery, and this is the aneurysm right there. It's huge. I think one of your patients, he had an aneurysm on his left middle cerebral artery. So it did not go well, and he had language problems because it hit Rocha's area in the left frontal lobe. So, um, not good. And I also wanted to just bring this in. So here's the common carotid artery. And then we're going to have uh, internal carotid that is going to your, your brain. 75% of the blood flow to your brain is from the carotid arteries, remember? 75% of the blood flow to the brain from the internal carotid arteries, 25% from the vertebral arteries. So if you have um, a blood clot here and a, a little embolus that lets loose, you can get a stroke. So this is real common, real common to have plaque buildup at this disjunction too. So just wanted to bring that up to you, let you see that. And I think we're done. So we are done with the circle of Willis. Not that hard. If you draw it, I promise you will re remember it forever, at least for a long time. On to the cranial nerves.